My name is John Terzian. I am the co-founder, co-president of the Hwood Group, which is a luxury hospitality group based in Los Angeles. This is Brian Toll, and I'm John Terzian's partner. We own restaurants, bars, nightclubs, and we have a catering and event business as well. The biggest issue that I have with it all is the lack of communication and, and transparency between the rule makers and what's going on and the business owners. Usually it takes, you know, two years to even get a permit to build a restaurant, right? They made these decisions, drastic decisions about minimum wage and service charge and time off and all this stuff within a matter of two or three months. And I know they did it to be as fast and under the radar as possible. We're not against a um, higher minimum wage. We're not against people making more money. We, in fact, already do it. What our issue is, is collectively, it's too much. I mean, there's a bunch of things in there that there was almost no give and take. And, you know, fortunately for us, Hwood has uh, 12 properties, very healthy financially. When you talk to, you know, a lot of solo operators, which is, makes up the majority, mom and pop shops where there's multiple families living off it, it's going to have drastic effects to basically only have large chains be able to kind of live through this. So I think that's where my kind of overall issue is with it more than anything. And I would add the timing. I mean, after a year of being shut to finally kind of bounce back and be normal for a little bit more than a quarter, and then in November or December to announce minimum wage hike after a year of being closed, it's just, I couldn't imagine a worse timing to do that. We're going to have to obviously roll with the punches. Um, there really aren't too many good options other than staff less and raise prices just to make the same money we were making previously. I have to imagine that that was the impetus for raising the minimum wage was to try and get more people back to work. LA, although there's a lot of locals, it's a bit of a transient city and the people come here to become actors and models and, you know, start a new life. But when something like a pandemic hits and they lose their job or they're not making money, the first thing that we lose are those people, right? And so a lot of bartenders and servers who wanted to be actors and models and, and that thing, we lost all of that workforce, right? They moved back home from wherever they're from. Then there was all these people who would rather day trade crypto and, and that kind of thing versus work in a restaurant and be around people where ultimately you are closer to COVID, odd hours, and so you lose those people. And so when we reopened, it was really, really, really hard to staff. And that, was, that went across the board from cooks to servers, to bartenders, to managers. It was not as easy as it used to be to get people to work, which is funny because a lot of restaurants didn't even reopen. And so even with um, a smaller amount of restaurants, it was tough to staff. So I think the minimum wage way was to try and encourage people to work more, but I don't think an extra dollar or two is what was keeping people from these jobs. There aren't that many ways you can do that in hospitality. I would say the, the latest thing is using the handhelds to let people pay at the table. You can go to the table and take your order. You can charge people's credit card at the table. So rather than a server having to run across the room every time someone wants something to type it into the POS system, they can do it at the table. So that technology has helped a little bit. You can't really automate cooks and cooking and what goes on in the kitchen. And I think people really do want that interaction with a human, right? We could easily stick an iPad on a table and let people just type in whatever they want to order. But I think for what we do, it's tough to replace, you know, a human. And just to touch on that, I think that's a little bit of the hard part is we're one of the few industries where the whole industry is not aligned, um, meaning independent restaurants and fast food, big, big fast food chain restaurants and big conglomerate restaurants have very, very different needs and goals and objectives. We can't go automated like we whereas fast food places can. You know, there's there's a bunch of little nuances like that. We are not looking to expand more in Los Angeles, sadly. This is our city. We, we're never moving from it. We love it. We're rooted here. We are aggressively expanding, specifically um, our two brands, Nice Guy and Delilah. You know, we're having an amazing time in Los, in Nevada uh, with one of our brands. We're looking heavily in, uh, we're opening in Miami. We're looking heavily in Texas and Austin and Dallas for our expansion. I think the key is be able to adapt. 
don't don't dwell on stuff you know i think do everything we can and some might work some might not work but to adapt to changing of times changing of rules you know where it's the, it's <clears throat> you got to truly be able to do that to survive uh, my advice would be look if you're passionate about it and you love the industry it's a great industry to be in right you can be an entrepreneur and you can create your own company and your own business and um, kind of do it your way and it's a one of the few industries that kind of combines business with also food and creation and art right you it's kind of a lot of things melded together which is interesting so especially being in LA we get to be we deal with people in the music business we deal with people in the movie business entertainment sports like we're dealing with all fashion we're dealing with all sorts of different people who frequent our places and so like John said it just don't get too down and don't get too discouraged and you have to stick with it we've had plenty of moments um, where we said maybe this isn't for us and 15 years later we're still here